How's it going everyone? My name is Arthur and today we're checking out whether the Beatbox Portable is still good in 2019. So this is the first ever portable speaker made by Beats, which was released in 2012 and retailed for 399 American dollars, which is more expensive than any speaker they make today. It definitely shows its age with the 30 pin connector at the top. I think the last Apple device to use this was the iPhone 4S, which was released in 2011. It doesn't look old fashioned though, but has that more kind of cool retro look to it. One of the speaker's biggest downfalls is that it doesn't have rechargeable batteries, but instead runs on six D-cell batteries, which are the massive round ones. I think I've only ever seen them used in torches and this speaker, which you just wouldn't find in 2019, when the majority of things we use either have fast or wireless charging. That said, it has 15 hours of battery life, whereas the Beats Pill Plus, which is their most recent speaker, only has 12. But if you're going to be replacing the batteries after every 15 hours, the cost is really going to add up. I have to say, for a portable speaker, it's not that portable. I mean, it's pretty big. It's three times wider and higher than the Beats Pill Plus. It's roughly the same length, but it's also five and a half times heavier. So if I was to throw it into my backpack, I probably wouldn't have room for much else. Just to give you an idea about the size, on the right is my iPhone 7, and on the left is the Sonos One speaker, which isn't a portable speaker, but it's so much smaller than the Beatbox, which is meant to be portable. It has a 3.5mm headphone jack at the back, as well as built-in Bluetooth, which is great because if you have a Google Home or an Amazon Echo, you can pair it with either of them and use the speaker to amplify the sound. Or if you want to go for that full retro look, you can use the 30 pin connector at the top with your iPod Classic. For a seven year old speaker, the sound quality is still really good. It's got a strong bass, but lacks lighting on the high end. The volume actually varies a lot. The speaker is much louder when you have it plugged into the mains rather than using battery power. This is because the power brick outputs 18 volts of power but the six D-cell batteries only output nine volts of power. This means when you use battery power, you're only providing the speaker with half the amount of energy it needs to function at full potential. It's also louder when you have your phone plugged in by the 3.5 mm headphone jack rather than over Bluetooth. This is probably because the speaker is using an older generation of Bluetooth. So this is a comparison of the sound using AC power and aux in which is much louder than battery power and Bluetooth. So if you're wanting the best sound quality possible while still controlling the speaker wirelessly, I recommend using the 3.5mm headphone jack with either an Amazon Echo or an Echo input. You could use a Chromecast audio, but since the Echo and the input have the advantage of voice control, i definitely go with them instead. So you can pick the speaker up on eBay from somewhere between 80 and 160 American dollars. So it's probably not worth getting one, unless you can get it for a really good price, just because there are so many better portable speakers in this price range, and I wouldn't really consider this portable anymore. Even though it's a seven year old speaker, it's still really good, and if you have one lying around, I definitely recommend getting an Echo input so you can update it to 2019. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will catch you all in the next one.